1995, Rick Warren joined emerging church leader Leonard Sweet to do an audio series called Tides of Change. In it, they talked about a new spirituality which was necessary for an age of transition in which the old modern ways of yesterday no longer worked effectively. Leonard Sweet, in turn, says he was influenced by a myriad of what he calls New Light Leaders, which are actually just New Agers. One of these acknowledgments goes to Matthew Fox, the author of The Coming of the Cosmic Christ. It is in reading his work that we start to see the old themes. I foresee a renaissance, a rebirth based on spiritual initiative. This new birth will cut through all cultures and all religions and indeed will draw forth the wisdom common to all vital mystical traditions in a global awakening I call deep ecumenism. That quote could easily have come from Alice Bailey. Loosely translated, he sees everyone coming together under one religious system. The theme of that whole book is that all humans have Christ consciousness within them. Taking inspiration from this, Leonard Sweet writes in his own book, Quantum Spirituality. Mysticism, once cast to the sidelines of the Christian tradition, is now situated in postmodernist culture near the centre. Too many people are nothing, as our empty pews are shouting at us, because we give them neither an energy fire experience of Christ, nor the Christ of an energy fire experience. We may help them apprehend reality through the rudiments of mystical speculations. Mysticism begins in experience, it ends in theology. Because the postmodern world is now abandoning outright atheism and is going back to mystery spirituality, Sweet suggests here that Christianity capitalise on that by incorporating mystery spirituality into their church in order to attract people into the pews. If people want mysticism and strange experiences, let's give it to them with a Christian facade. He says that mysticism is all about experiences that excite the senses. It's all about what you feel and not about what is true or false. This is a clear path to deception. Leith Anderson wrote, The old paradigm taught that if you had the right teaching, you will experience God. The new paradigm says that if you experience God, you will have the right teaching. What you feel comes first. What is true comes second. Therefore, all Satan has to do is give them a strange experience and they will not question its source. They will assume it has come from God and follow it. This easily leads to deception as we have seen over and over throughout history how Satan is able to disguise himself as an angel of light and has inspired people to follow his paths by this method. In order to facilitate this process of exciting the senses and making people feel like they're having a God experience, emerging churches use multi-sensory worship which is designed to bombard senses of sight, smell, touch, taste and hearing. The sensory overload makes you feel a certain way, even if it's done with smoke and mirrors, and therefore you are inclined to trust and absorb the teaching, however dark it may be. Speaking of darkness, one of the keys to emerging worship is creating an atmosphere of darkness. Emerging leader Dan Kimball writes, In the emerging culture, darkness represents spirituality. We see this in Buddhist temples as well as Catholic and Orthodox churches. Darkness communicates that something serious is happening. You see, because they are part of a conversation and feel it's arrogant to claim Christianity is any better than another religion, they feel they have something to learn from things like Buddhist temples and are therefore ready to incorporate elements of other religions into their own. Just as there isn't anything really new about the New Age at all and it's just a regurgitation of ancient ideas, the same is true for the emerging church. They talk about a new way of doing things for the postmodern era, but it's really just incorporating old lies. They often use the term vintage Christianity, referring to the need to recover pagan elements of Catholicism that the Reformation removed. They may also use the term ancient future worship, which implies the same thing, rediscovering ancient Babylonian mystical ideas for the future. We've already heard Tony Campolo talking about the way he uses Catholic mysticism in his faith when he said, I learned about this way of having a born-again experience from reading the Catholic mystics, especially the spiritual exercises of Ignatius of Loyola. Like most Catholic mystics, he developed an intense desire to experience a oneness with God. 
We know that these spiritual exercises led to an encounter in the cave with a serpent, and his so-called secret knowledge had ugly consequences, to say the least. Campolo also said, After the Reformation, we Protestants left behind much that was troubling about Roman Catholicism of the 15th century. I am convinced that we left too much behind. The methods of praying employed by the likes of Ignatius have become precious to me. With the help of some Catholic saints, my prayer life has deepened. So along with the rest of the emergent movement, he's saying, let's put aside our differences with Catholicism and undo the Reformation by merging Christianity with it. How quickly people forget. A thousand years of dark ages culminating in the most atrocious wickedness from the Jesuits, and within just a few hundred years of them being exposed and driven out, modern day leaders are ready to get back into bed with the whole system. Our forefathers just a few generations back were ready to lay down their lives rather than accept such pagan pollution. Today there are teachers who are readily accepted within Christian circles that are actively promoting a unification with Rome. Robert Weber, another emerging leader, agrees with this ecumenism when he says, A goal for evangelicals in the postmodern world is to accept diversity as a historical reality, but to seek unity in the midst of it. This perspective will allow us to see Catholic, Orthodox and Protestant churches as various forms of the one true church, all based on apostolic teaching and authority, finding common ground in the faith expressed by classical Christianity. Brian McLaren is in the same boat. Many Christian leaders started searching for a new approach under the banner of spiritual formation. This new search has led many of them back to Catholic contemplative practices and medieval monastic disciplines. This has coined the phrase new monasticism and it is something many well-meaning Christians have been taken in by. You may have heard of something called boiler rooms, which are designed to be an outworking of new monasticism, whereby people maintain a continual rhythm of prayer. Of course, if we were to unite with Catholicism, we would be uniting with the goddess of that religion, who is Asherah in the form of Mary, and we know she has always been completely hostile to Christians throughout history and will have no equals. The Catholic Church has a program to evangelize the whole world, to bring people to Mary, and several Catholic authors have written books about where they see this plan heading. One such author is Thomas W. Petrisco, who wrote the book, Mother of the Secret, From Eucharistic Miracles to Marian Apparitions, Heaven has sought to illuminate and defend what was once the Church's greatest secret. Petrisco sees the Church's greatest secret becoming the cornerstone of a glorious new era, he states in his book, Visionaries foretell that mankind will move from a secular, agnostic, practically atheistic realm into a world that basks in the reality of God and belief in the supernatural. The prophets say that mankind will then thrive on secure faith and confidence in this reality, for true peace will rule and the church will reign supreme. Most notably, many Catholic visionaries insist that the world will at last come to deeply understand the power, the mercy and the grace that is available in the miraculous presence of Jesus Christ in the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist. The Eucharist is the circular wafer representing the sun that is placed inside the crescent moon shaped monstrance and actually represents Baal, not Jesus. And of course, he is only saying what the occultists like Albert Pike, Alice Bailey and Helena Blavatsky have been saying for a long time. People will largely abandon atheism and go back to a new age of mystery spirituality. It's already happening. But the key point is that he believes that Mary, aka Asherah, will be key to all this. It is said that the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary during our times will gloriously lead the world into a new era of peace. Ted and Maureen Flynn expand upon this idea in their book, The Thunder of Justice. As John the Baptist prepared the way for the first coming of Christ, Mary prepares the way for his second coming. Mary proclaims that a new world and era is upon us, and the triumph of her Immaculate Heart and the Second Pentecost will usher in the reign of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Occultists believe that the Goddess is preparing the way for their Antichrist. Remember Anton LaVey called this the Age of Lilith, and believed it began with the Cultural Revolution of the 1960s, so we're already over 50 years into it. According to the Flynns, the coming of this false Christ is very near, as they say they received a prophecy from the Blessed Mother saying, 
the glorious reign of Christ which will be established in our midst and the second coming of Jesus into the world is close at hand. Another Catholic, Dwight Longenacker, writes in The Road to Rome that, as we enter the third millennium, Catholicism, Evangelicalism and Orthodoxy will continue to converge. Thomas Merton, a Catholic mystic who has been an inspiration to many in the emerging movement, sums up what many feel. We are already one, but we imagine that we are not, and what we have to recover is our original unity. The emerging church that embraces these ideas of ecumenism is trying to lead evangelical Christians back to Rome and the mysteries that course through its veins.